Hi, I'm John. This is my show, An American Scheme, where I'm proving that Diana Ross is Michael Jackson's actual mother. So this is Tommy, Soto, so, Tommy Sotomayor. Uh, he's a internet personality and YouTube, and I know he does this OnlyFans stuff, but he's like a, a radio talk show host. Uh, he's not a DJ, he doesn't really play music, but he sings a lot of songs. He's a comedian, whatever. So now... I had watched him for quite a few months and stuff, and uh, but then it's like over a period of time, I, I ended up not actually liking him as a person. The person he actually is, I really don't like him. But just because I, I turned against not really liking him as a person doesn't mean that I will not acknowledge what a talent he actually is. Now, as, as being like this talk show host of what he does and this, this show that he does, he's talented. And I like a guy like this, he's definitely far much more educated than I am. He, his uh, mind is uh, really good. He's really sharp. He remembers a lot of things. He's got a lot of uh, built-up knowledge stored in his head of which he can draw from to uh, illustrate the skits of what he does and stuff. He's funny. He is funny. They're, like I would say he's probably the most talented of like these YouTube uh talk show host type of people like that. So like I said, I don't really like him as a person. I've grown to not like him as a person, but that doesn't mean I won't acknowledge him as a talent of what he actually does. He is very talented. He's very good at what he does. If you watch his show, you're probably gonna be entertained. He doesn't, it's, he, he transitioned because he, he does like shows almost every day. So you gotta deal with like real life people in their real life, their personalities differ from day to day and stuff, right? And he's open and honest about things. He, so you're gonna get different personalities day to day. You're gonna get some little variances like that stuff. But yeah, like I said, he's interesting. You'll get a good show from him, you're, but you can't expect every day to be exactly the same, which is a good thing though too, you know? So I just wanted to show, I've, I haven't been watching him for a long time. I, as, as far as like all of like, cause he, even though he's a, talk show host and he has a lot of white fans he's still technically in the black community okay so i uh, i haven't been in the black community for a while and stuff i've kind of haven't watched in their videos and stuff but this new issue has come up with this guy named brother polite and so i wanted to get information on brother polite and watch a lot of things that people were saying about him and stuff so i uh came back to tommy's page and watched a couple of his videos and then he was doing this video about bob dylan and a couple things came up here in the, about the bob dylan and i wanted to show you because it, it and he he talks about Michael Jackson and so I wanted to show you some of the stuff of how things relate and people are just uh, mis uh, they're confused about Michael Jackson and they're always relating Michael Jackson to these other events and these other stories but the whole thing is they're wrong about Michael Jackson and this needs to be cleared up and until people listen to my story and deal with it then the people are keep gonna freaking misrepresenting Michael Jackson and stuff so here listen to this Michael Jackson, there's no way you'd have a regular motherfucker and you just say, hey, go spend the night with the neighbor. Go spend the night with the guy down the street. Go spend the night with the guy states away who lives in a compound. But that's what they did to Michael Jackson. Y'all remember when... Uh... Okay, so see what he's talking about, Michael Jackson, because he's talking about... He's talking about how parents let their st their children hang out with celebrities just because they're celebrities. And because of that, these celebrities end up fucking their children all the time and stuff. That's that's the conversation of what he was talking about here. He's saying that's like a common occurrence. He's like, why are you he's saying, so he was saying whose fault is it? He was trying to say whose fault is it? Is it the parents' fault for allowing the child to go visit Michael Jackson or is it Michael Jackson's fault for molesting the children? So he was implicating Michael Jackson as being a child molester and stuff, right? So this is what I want to clarify it's like yeah tommy what you were saying about all that stuff's totally right and shit right but you're wrong about your one main assumption about michael jackson is that he was molesting children he was not molesting children he had another issue and this is what i'm going to show you here so there's a couple things here with tommy i wanted to show you Okay, now this is the other part when he's talking about bob dylan i mean let's bring this because this also this also uh coincides with my Michael Jackson story. The same thing about what he's talking about, same issues and stuff. But he changed his name from Robert Zimmerman to Bob Dylan. Yes, because that Zimmerman let you know who he was. But if you take a look at his curly hair, typically when you saw Robert Zimmerman, you would understand that Robert Zimmerman was in fact a Jew. But as things go out there in the world, well, you don't want people to know you's a Jew, just like there's a lot of these dudes who were Jews in the entertainment uh, industry who changed their name 
but they were in fact Jews. Did y'all y'all knew this, right? Y'all knew this, right? And almost every one of them, from the dude who did Rosemary's Baby, to the dude who was the music singer who shot the woman and blew the woman's face off. Am I lying, ladies and gentlemen? Right, somebody said, Howard Stern looking at us. They all look the same. When you stop for a second, you realize, damn, they look. They all look the same. And okay, so, see, now, he is a black man. He understands that there's a black stereotype about black people all looking alike. So, this is what I'm saying, like, the comedy. And he's an intellectual. He, he does funny stuff. So, him, for them, to, for him, being a black man who understands that the blacks have the stereotype as being that they all look alike, that that's a common uh, reference made towards black people. So, for him, then, to go to saying about the Jewish people, saying they all look alike, okay? It's funny, okay? It's, it's subtle and stuff, but when you actually understand it's like that's actually really really funny okay but it's true it's, it's the, one of the reasons why it's so funny is because it's true right and so when you got a black dude harping on the stereotype about the Jewish people all look like it's actually really funny <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's really funny. But now, now we now we can do there's a difference between stereotypes and facts, okay? So now I say that Michael Jackson's real parents are Diana Ross and Smokey Robinson, that Michael was given to the Jackson family because Diana Ross was only 14 years old, which actually relates to the story about what he's talking about, Bob Dylan and pe people sleeping with these young girls. It's really a very similar story. That's why it's like, let me put this video together. So he's saying that... Uh, they all look alike, right? So let's look at the Jacksons and stuff. And he was talking about Bob Dylan changing his name and stuff like that, right, too. So so people wouldn't know, you know, what he was exactly. So I say that Michael was given to the Jackson family because it, it Michael's birth coincided with Smokey Robinson meeting Barry Gordy and them trying to build Motown Records. If you look at the... Like, okay, Smokey Robinson met Barry Gordy in August of 1957. Michael's conceived just a few months after that, which I have documented of Diana Ross saying that she was sleeping in Smokey Robinson's house and she was in love with him at that time. Okay, she got pregnant, but because Smokey's trying to build a company with Barry Gordy, Barry Gordy is already an established uh, songwriter. He doesn't want that scandal to destroy what he's trying to build with Smokey and Motown, but even more than that, he doesn't want to destroy his reputation as being an actually established songwriter. He's a professional songwriter already. He doesn't want to ruin all that. So they make the choice of abandoning the baby to the Jackson family. Now there's more history there. I'm not can't can't get in. I can't do it all. I'm trying to make a quick video here and stuff. But let's just look at the real the quick thing. Now they all say, they, everybody always says, oh, the Jacksons, they all look alike. But now let's look at the reality. First of all, you just look at the talent. Michael's talent is totally different. You cannot compare any of the brother's talent to Michael. He's got a voice. He's a real artist. He writes his songs. He's a dancer like, like nobody's ever seen. He's different, right? When you look at his talent, there's no doubt that they're different. But do they actually look alike? So... You're going to tell me those kids actually look alike, or is it just a stereotype that black people all look alike? Now, they got afros. You know, they're in the same family. They're a musical band, so you're saying, oh, well, they all look alike. But look at them. You're going to tell me those kids look alike? They absolutely do not look alike. They do not look alike. They're totally different. The only reason why you would say that they look alike is the same thing that Tommy, Tommy Sotomayor was referencing. They're like, oh, well, all J Jewish people look alike. They all got this curly hair, you know, and they got the, their nose is similar when you know what, he, what, the, uh, what he's talking about. So that's what you're seeing here. You're just seeing that, that thing about, and then so they knew that they could put Michael in that family. And then when, when Joe made the band, he, he's like, Michael's part of our family. Nobody's gonna say he doesn't look like us. He makes them all look alike. And they all knew that those stereotypes existed. And when they make the Jackson 5, they go to Motown. They all put them in the same haircut. They uh, dress them in the similar clothes. Here's a, uh, here's a family. There is no issue about Michael living in the house, the Jackson. So why would anybody think that Michael's not a Jackson. And then they're, all, then they're just, you're gonna see what you want is your mind chooses to see what it wants, mind sees what it chooses to see. Then you're all just gonna be like, well, they all look alike. You're gonna make them look alike. They don't. Like this, okay, you're gonna tell me Michael looks like Tito? Cause Tito uh, looks just like Joe. You're gonna tell me Michael looks like Tito? No, he does not. He doesn't look anything like that dude. 
They're totally different. Look at their faces. They do not look alike. I mean, you can go down to Jermaine, it's the same thing. That kid doesn't look like that kid. No, they don't. Because Jermaine looks like uh, Catherine. Michael doesn't look like Jermaine. Jermaine doesn't look like Tito. But they're Jacksons, and within the Jackson family, you can see the similarities. And because there is so much variance within the Jackson family, Michael just kind of blended in there. But the reality, they do not look alike. They do not. And not only do they not look alike, they don't have any of the same talent. They don't. They're not the same. Michael's not part of the Jackson family. But now let me show you actual, like, real proof to uh, explaining who Michael Jackson actually is. So, this is the song Billie Jean, which I say Billie Jean has been misinterpreted this whole time it's been misinterpreted, and Billie Jean is actually about Michael Jackson's experience of when he was signed to Motown, they moved to LA, then they were living in Diana Ross's house. That's when Diana Ross informs Michael that he's the love child of her and Smokey Robinson. So Billie Jean is actually about Diana Ross informing Michael Jackson that she was his son, that he was her son. Okay, that's what Billie Jean's actually about. So now let me show you some uh, correlating evidence to prove that this is what the song is about, that people have misinterpreted it. So she was more like a beauty queen from a movie scene. So the first line, the first line of the song Billie Jean, he's talking about this Billie Jean, she was more like a beauty queen from a movie scene. Now, Michael Jackson knows who Diana Ross is. She's from the Supremes. But at the time he's living in her house in the early 70s, Diana Ross is filming her first movie, Lady Sings the Blues. So his interpretation is she was more like, because he knows who Diana Ross the singer is, but when she comes and tells him the truth that she's his mother, she's more like a beauty queen from a movie scene. Okay? Now... Here's Diana Ross in Lady Sings the Blues. Watch this. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What'd you say your name was? Eleanor. Ellen. Uh, Ella who? Uh, Billy. 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 That's where the Billy comes from, from Billie Jean. So at the time, she was more like a beauty queen from a movie scene. Diana Ross is filming the movie Lady Sings the Blues at the time that Michael's living in her house. And she's playing the Keller character Billy Holidays. What's your name? Billy. Billy. Billy Holiday. Billy Holiday, that's my name. Okay, Billy. Okay, Billy. And look at her. If you can't tell that that, now, you want to talk about what does Michael Jackson look like? That's what Michael Jackson looks like. That's his mother. And that's where he gets his talent. And she's playing Billy. Billy. Okay, Billy. She's playing Billy Holiday at the time of which Michael Jackson's living in her house. So... Okay, again, from Billie Jean. She came and stood right by me. Okay, she came and stood right by me. Then the smell of sweet perfume, because it's Diana Ross. This happens much too soon. She called me to her room, okay? She came and stood right by me, because it's Diana Ross in her house, and she's coming to grab Michael to take her to her room to tell him the truth. This is where it happened. She came and stood right by me. It shows that this Billie Jean woman can walk right up to Michael and stand right by him. Then the smell of sweet perfume, because that's what he remembers of Diana Ross, the smell of sweet perfume. This happens much too soon because Michael Jackson's like 10, 11 years old when he's living in Diana Ross's house at the time that she informs him. She calls me to her room. She's in charge. Michael, come with me to my room. This is not just some groupie Billie Jean. This is very specific of what he's talking about. Now... Now, the actual correlating evidence to, to link up to that moment in time. And I, I mean, I, when I was little, I used to stay with Diana Ross, me and my brothers. We stayed with her for years. When I was little, I used to stay with Diana Ross. Me and my brother, we stayed with her for years. So right there, there's Michael Jackson uh, confirming that he was living in Diana Ross's house when he was little. She came and stood, uh, this happens much too soon. She calls me to her room. This happens much too soon. She calls me to her room. That's what the song Billie Jean is about. Then, everybody's always wrong. This is all you've got to do to understand what the song is about and understand the whole thing is this line. Now, the line, she's just a girl who claims that I'm the one. So this line starts off with she's a girl. So she's, she's the girl. She's the one saying this. She's just a girl who claims that I'm the one, that I am the one, right? It starts off with... Who's, who's the one claiming that Michael's the one? She. It's this Billie Jean person, right? But then the next line... 
but the kid is not my son. So now she's just a girl who claims that I'm the one, but the kid is not my son. People separated that and claimed it's Michael making the next line, but it's not. It's Billie Jean has said this whole line and it starts off with she's just a girl who claims that I'm the one but the kid is not my son. Billie Jean says all of that to Michael. When she calls Michael to the room, she tells Michael she claims that I'm the one. Michael, you're the love child of me and Smokey Robinson. It was because me abandoning you as a child, it spawned all of these other events to happen. Like like just for instance, Diana Ross now has the connection to Smokey Robinson and Barry Gordy, which enables her to go to Motown and become the lead singer of the Supremes, which allows her to have this great career. If Michael's not abandoned to the Jackson, there is no Jackson 5 without Michael in that family. So Michael's the one. His uh, being uh, conceived and abandoned spawned all these other events to happen. All kinds of shit. When you actually get into it, there's a lot more there. But Michael is a Jackson. Michael died a Jackson, right? Michael lived his whole life as a Jackson. So Diana tells Michael, but you're a Jackson. You're not, I'm not going to take you away from them. You're going to stay with them. You're signed to Motown. You're the Jackson 5. So Diana says, she's just a girl who claims that I'm the one, but the kid is not my son. This is the duality of the experience of what Michael. So when Michael goes into the room with Diana, Diana embraces him and she rejects him again at the same time right there she embraces him but then she rejects him that's what the line is saying she's just a girl who claims that i'm the one but the kid is not my son she embraces him and she rejects him that's Diane, uh, Billy Jean says that whole line. And once you understand what the, the true meaning of that line is, you know that Michael does not say that line. And if Michael doesn't say that line, the song is not about what you people think it's about. That's all like, the proof that you need. It's not about what you think it's about. It's about Diana informing Michael Jackson that she was his real mother. Diana is Billy Jean. Michael was the kid in the song. That's what it's all about. And then after this, the next line, Billie Jean's not my lover. You know, it says, Billie Jean's not my lover. How many times during the song does he say, Billie Jean's not my lover? He telling you. And Billie Jean's not my lover. Sure, that rhymes a lot with mother. She's not my lover. She's my mother. She's not my lover. She's my mother. That's what it's actually about. That's what this is about. This is what art is. This is what an artist is. This is a guy expressing his inner feelings and the only outlet of what he had to do is to put it in his art and make these songs to document his true life experience, but nobody ever seen it. Nobody understood it because everybody's out there saying, oh, that, that stupid black stereotype. Oh, they all look alike. 